Hello everyone, this is Waldorf. And this is Tetler. And today we're continuing with our beta reviews, I guess. Yes, this is... Uh, this is our thumbs down. Our thumbs down video. The things that we... The changes that we did not like. We've already had our thumbs up video. So. Right, we thought we'd start on a positive note. <laughs> right. <laughs> and this will be followed by a wish list video. But on the beta 2.01 slash 02, because the... February update came out before we got a chance to do this video. Correct, because we're lazy and it took us a long time to do it. Yes, we were. We talked to, about it a lot. You, you were playing too many games. And I was playing a ton of games. <laughs> that we had to tape, so we have that. So this basically incorporates you know, both of those updates, and we've actually removed a couple things because the 2.2 actually it fixed, fixed a few, a few things, things that we didn't, that we didn't like. like in the 2.1. That's true. So, yeah. All right, so let's see what we got. So what is it? Here's a, Maybe. Here's our thoughts. And we don't necessarily agree on all these, but Apparently we'll talk we about them anyway. There, there we go. go. There's our thoughts. We'll start with the line slash horde formation. Yes. It's called line formation. It, the only reason I put this in there this way is it used to be horde formation. Yes. Um, <clears throat> this so, is something we do not. I do not like, and I don't think well, you do. No, either. neither one of us like this one. So the old rule is a horde rule where if you were 10 wide, you got to basically fight in an extra rank. Correct. Which uh, we thought was a... Uh, an eighth edition holdover that had no place in the game. So, as such, as a general formation yes, for any army, as, as a formation, because how it impacted non elite, uh, how it impacted elite units, even correct, it was even better for elite units than it was for what we consider right. hordes. So, they replaced it with this new line formation, which now is only eight wide. You just which, don't get your rank bonus, right. but you still get to fight in extra ranks. And by being eight wide, and it's even two, better. Yeah, and with the 2.0, 2.2 release, now you can shoot an extra ranks. Correct. With it. Which actually I think is a good addition to that. But, that part I didn't mind. But uh, but like I said, going from 10 wide down to eight wide made it even better for yes, elite Yes, for elite units. guys, because now a lot of them are, are capped at 30 or 25, so now they can guarantee that they get all their extra fighting ability right. into combat. So because they really they win each round of combat so they don't care about the losing their rank bonus. The rank benefit. bonus. Because yeah. they're making it up in casualties with those extra guys those extra eight extra guys fighting. So yes. uh, yeah, yeah this is this is a rule. Yeah I, I wish they would just have done away with it. Um, we're gonna talk more about what we'd like to see them do with horde infantry in a different video, but to me the, this is a rule to, this this is built around Helping the lead infantry who don't need help. <laughs> who have no need of help. Exactly. You are correct. Yeah. Um, not a fan of this at all. This change, when I first saw this, I was very opposed to it when it first came out. And nothing's changed. And now you're playing Highborn Elves and you love it because it really helps your Highborn Elf guys. <laughs> I, I tried one unit in that formation. <laughs> yeah. Turns out that that's not as good as unit as I was making myself out to believe. Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so but yes, you are correct. It did help those. It did help that highborn elf elite unit incredibly. Get more attacks in. Correct. All right. So that brings us to wheeling. Yeah. And now they've they changed how the wheeling works in the game, how you measure it. Um, and I was messing around during this because I want to bring this over. Yes. To help with this point, <laughs> exactly. We not don't that this not that this helps with anything. No, it, it makes the point. <laughs> we don't have a problem with how you measure from the front. I I think we no. I think both was, think that was a great. It was a great change. change. Now it's corner to corner. No yeah. trying to bother the the actual arc. That simplifies things. The problem is the back models that you have to measure them also. Correct. It's unlikely to cause your problems in marching. I should say unlikely. It's it's less likely to cause you problems in marching than it is in advancing. Advancing, it is a pain in the tuchus because you right. have to measure those. And I'm, I was at your last tournament. I was watching people move. No one's no, one's no one was following it. It's like there's no freaking way that guy just made that ninety degree turn. <laughs> the, Correct. You make a ninety degree turn, and also the guy moved nine inches. You could only move four. I mean, if you look in this second example here, if this unit makes a ninety degree turn, they show twelve and a half to here. But back up to here, and that guy's still going 10, 11. <laughs> exactly. I mean, not 11, but I mean 10 or 9. He's still going too far. This unit, on a normal move, cannot... If it takes a normal move, uh, not a, what is it, an advance, not a march, this unit cannot make a 90-degree wheel. Correct. No chance. Right. 
I mean, it'd be lucky if it can make like a 45 degree wheel with this guy having to move all the way over here. Exactly. So, and then, you know, I, I believe a fifth, a picture is worth a thousand words and they could, and by having diagrams, they could actually simplify a lot of their language. Right. They wouldn't have to be quite so, try to be so precise and verbose by doing it. But when this is your graphic, right, (laughs) this is not helpful. (laughs) Anyway, you know, I, I feel like I have to, you know, call my friend who's a mathematician, Correct. you know, just to read the, the diagram. I mean, the problem comes in the wheeling is, and that is, it's, where was it? The distance moved is equal to the unit of the outer edge. Where does it say about the node, all models that you can move? It's under the, the, the advance versus okay. March. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's not there. All right. Yeah. Anyway, um, the, again, the problem is the limiting. It used to be. That you were allowed to move up to your march twice move. Twice the march, twice your movement. Or when your you do a wheel, but now you cannot, which makes wheeling very tight. And like I said, I don't know that many people have caught on and are paying attention to Correct. that. Correct. And I, I think it's a okay design decision to make wheeling tight. Not, nothing wrong with that. Um, but, but the other, I mean, this is this is a fancy game, not reality. But in reality, the guys don't march when you're doing marching and parade. You don't run all the way around to the back. You Correct. Actually, you actually curl around and then you straighten your formation. Exactly. So you're not actually moving that far anyway. I guess you're yeah. trying to represent that by you like, move and then you. But if you advance, it's okay. But if you don't advance, it's not okay. Like this was a valid move. This guy that's starting right here doesn't go to here to here <laughs> to back to here. Right. I mean, he pretty much kind of goes loops around and gets back to where he wants to be exactly but it's, you think about it, it's kind of funny that the second position with this the 17 on is illegal because the back guys move too far correct which is an easier move at least for if there were troops on the ground than, than the third position <laughs> exactly you know so yeah this one we we really i think we both really like how they made the wheel easier to measure from the front but the back just now you're going to mark your guys and get into those discussions Either, if you want to restrict wheeling, just make wheeling two to one, <laughs> if that's what you're trying to achieve. So people have to, or do away with wheeling, do what Kings of War does, and you just pivot and, and, and move. Pivot and move, yeah, you I'd know. rather not see that. I, I'd rather not see Sorry that, I, that. Thank you for knocking over my tanks. You're, you're welcome, the, uh, no tanks. And then, there would be no tanks here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the measuring of the back is just, it's just, let's just look at these. It's just these, too cumbersome. These, it's just too cumbersome. Right. You know, most of the mechanics in this game are, are straightforward, and this, this just is not. All right. So that's that's what we're talking about when we say yes. wheeling. Next, we come to the charge agility bonus. Yes. We're split on this one. We are. I'm okay with what it is. I'm okay with giving the guy who gets the charge off the plus one cop, plus one initiative, plus one, sorry, plus one agility. agility. Thank you. <laughs> that's why I see it agility. Says agility. That's why I see agility bonus. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so stuck in it, I can't even read it. Yes. Anyway. Um, the only reason it bothers me uh, is because quite often you've got you've got two equally related units, and it's who gets to charge off. Right. And a lot of what determines who gets to charge off is how well you roll your dice. So there's a, ran, there's a big random factor in that. Correct. To minimize your randomization, you're guaranteeing that your opponent charges you first because you have to get close enough to, you know, oh, okay. to get your charge off. So, with with charging, and I like the random aspect of charging, the random distances, and I understand they're trying to reward um, attacking and not just sitting back. Correct. But agility is so important in the game. Basically, you, know, you get all your you get all your attacks off first, and if you've got you know high weapon skill and or high strength guys, that means you're going to kill a number of guys, which Usually means the guy swinging back at you is is going to be harmed. Not so critical for big units, but cavalry it really blows. It may, it, it, the one arm in this game <laughs> that, we, that I think we both agree does not do well because it's so charge dependent, and charge ranges are so far now. I mean, right. the same as Eighth Edition, you know, yes. which is there. You you can charge on turn two comfortably. Well, and then along those same lines. And this is kind of it follows more in the wish list, but while you're talking about charging, the fact that I mean, the movement seven infantry, I mean, movement four infantry, and your human cav, your move seven cav, the infantry, I mean, the infantry really, the possibility, the high end charge is only three inches shorter. Correct. It's that difference that bothers yes. me more than anything. 
Exactly. Not the agility bump. And the, and the low end is the same. Correct. Because you both get the same bonus for your command. Correct. I just think the... Um, anyway, that's a... That's more of a problem to me than just giving the guy so that's the why, agility bump. So if you're going to keep the the charge distances, the mechanism, the way the you know the eighth edition model, the way they are now, right? Then I don't think you should be giving this this type of a, an ability that really rewards hard hitting units. Okay. So yeah. what's your choice? And people say, oh well, when they counter charge, you can always flee. It's like great. I can flee, but now my my battle unit's in the freaking back of the battle line. So he's out for two turns. If, right. And then if I roll At poorly, best, it might run off the table. Might go off the table. Because <laughs> especially if it's cavalry with swift strides. So, Correct. yeah, I don't think that's... Uh, so that, that's my my challenge with it is I the okay. concept. I just don't like it with, uh, with the distance. Yeah, I can... I, I see your point, but I do think there needs to be a... I don't mind the... I don't... I think the person that charges should get a, a bump. I don't Some mind the bump. I, I just think agility is the wrong bump. The wrong, okay. The way, the way things work currently. Okay. All right. That brings us to War Machines in Combat and the Overrun ability. Yeah. Um, why did we leave this? Oh, I think we did it. I like what they did with it. The problem now is they've moved War Machines to round bases. Yes. <laughs> this is not a... I mean, I like what they did with more machines it's the round in the combat bases. and the yes. lining up on them now and the limits the overruns because you do have to line up. Right. On them. There's none of this really weird. And even watching this, I see people getting it wrong. I've Correct. corrected a couple people saying, no, you got to be centered. You can't be I over here. I ran into that. So this is a new, it's a fairly new rule. New. And a lot of people didn't notice it because it's not well pointed out in there. And then it's like, oh, how, you know, oh, I've got well, four I guys in combat. Be. No, you got six. Right. I'm <laughs> 75, you know, whatever I am, why, yeah. you know, you've got to. Because it seems that people, they, they don't, especially, and this is a. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, this is a little thing that's a GW thing that gets in the games. It causes, and they probably need to maybe say something about this. I don't know. Cavalry bases and infantry bases are not both 20, they're not 25 and 25. That is a good point. Right? <clears throat> yes. So they don't actually line up perfectly. So you get into the discussion, well, do I have five cavalry? <laughs> that is a valid point. I have six cavalry because I'm slightly smaller. Right. So. It is a good point. Yeah. But but no, I mean, to, I, I love what they did with War Machines and Combat too. and Overrun. I just think, unfortunately, you've got to break the bad news and go back to square yeah, bases. Yeah, they need to go back to square bases. I mean, I see you had that <clears throat> you had that ridiculous thing back in 8th where people would have long war machines and they'd turn them sideways so they could pivot and shoot in the next phase right you know I, I can see why you want to <laughs> deal with that and that's to me that's what the round bases really did more than anything else right <laughs> yeah but um, yeah I just they need to go back to it's a, it's a square base game go, go back to the square bases and that that solves this problem the way they have the mechanics now being one of the only ones who's redone a lot of their war machines. Well, that's... Well, <laughs> Being in the minority point. of those, I yeah. disagree, but anyway. I mean, I have a few. Of, well, I've seen people go, oh, I've rebased all my... And I look, and I look at battle report after battle yeah, report. I go to tournament after see. tournament. I don't see hardly any round bases. I know. Or I see somebody just stuck a round base under the square base, maybe. <laughs> you know, half the time I just see the war machine sitting there with nothing under it. <laughs> you know, maybe it's different in Europe, but I don't, I don't see it online, that being the case. I just... That's just okay. what I've seen. So, yeah, I think... Let's go back to the square basis. Next, we have the to hit chart. <laughs> this is uni this is our universal most hated. We are not fans of the to hit chart. No. The ability for really good guys to now hit on twos and for really bad, you don't see it anywhere near as much. But the really bad troops hitting on sixes. Yes. Um, I am not a fan of. I need. I think the five. I mean the the twos and the fives need to come back off that chart. Ash and trash troops, which were already at a disadvantage in the game. You know, really your cheapy Correct. toughness three, maybe zombie one, slash skill three, whatever. You know, goblins, whatever. Of uh, this hurts them even more. Correct. Uber things like scourge of scourge wrath. of wrath or or uber characters, that makes them even better. Well, I'm seeing. <laughs> The Scourge of Wrath, the way I see it played with the build I see it run, right, is weapon skill, offensive weapon skill of eleven. Yep. 
That means unless your offensive weapon skill is eight, he's now hitting you on twos with hatred. Yes. So the the hope that you held out with cheap units is that after his hatred's gone, okay, maybe he'll fluff a roll and miss me three or four times and I can get some, you know. Yeah, get some combat res on him. Get some combat res on him and hopefully have a chance to win. And maybe he'll roll high and he'll get a wound on him. And now that's not happening. No. Um, I, I do not like this chart. I This is probably... Mm, this is really up there as the number number one thing I do not like the change. In to the me, game. this is a number. To me, it goes. In, and actually, probably will be the number one. Yeah, this goes to me as the number one, and I think they went in the totally opposite direction. They should have. They think should be much more easier to hit in the game overall. Right. So you're crappy. You like guys. the hitting things easier. <laughs> right. <clears throat> anyway, I, I'm not a fan. The next one we have is. The flee from combat direction. This is when you're in combat, you break and flee. Um, this is one. So you don't like this one, and I like. This yeah, one. we're kind of split on this one. I don't. I the old the old rule was you fled from the largest or the one with the most. The ranks. center of the. the, and the well, <laughs> yeah. The center of the largest or the one with most ranks, whichever version we're talking about. That I did not like. I do like the flea directly away. I think yes. that's a fantastic change. What I don't like is the choice of who you flee from. I've got my army, my, my unit of orcs is fighting something. I've got a unit of 50 spear wagon. elves in front of me. Yeah. And I've got an eagle in my flank. And my opponent, because of the advantage to it, decides I have to flee from the eagle. That rule I do not like at all. Yeah. I don't mind it because it gives you the tactical advantage of combo charges. It, it does. But, again, it's just it's not immersive. I don't like that. Yeah. Especially when you see the, oh, I was one, oh, I got one more model in this unit, so you run that way. It's like, oh, whatever. Right. <laughs> anyway. So, I, I don't mind it because of the tactical ability, but I, I understand why, from well, an immersive there. perspective, you know. You you would think you'd probably if you're broke you'd probably run from the thing that was the most scary. I don't necessarily agree it's the largest, if, or even but, the things that did the most wounds to you. Yeah, I mean that's a little bit of bookkeeping though. But anyway, it makes more sense than, like I said, running from that eagle in that situation where the other guys are the ones that are doing all the damage. Yeah, but whatever. Um, special rules sectioned. Yeah, <laughs> this is a format issue. This is not a problem with rules at all. This is the way they formatted it in the book. Yes. The special rules used to all be grouped together. Under one so thing. So if you so looked at a special rule, you could find it. In alphabetical order. Correct. Now the special rules are broken into three different... Three? Is it three or four? Four? Is it five? I, think it's, I don't remember. I, think it I might can't be. remember. Anyway. It's... Whatever number of different categories, and they're listed alphabetically un under those individual categories... And you spend a lot more time That's looking right. up. Is, a, is this an armor thing, or is this a character thing, or I don't? Right. You end up, or even where is the armor thing? Where is the character thing in here? I, I really dislike right. the way this is formatted. In the and book. it's not awful if you're somebody who has your tablet there and you can click and go through. But click if, and search. Yes. You know. I can't search in a printed rule book. But you can't do that when you have the printed rule book, which right. us old farts like. We like yeah. stuff to be on paper. And. You know, like I said, I just went to a tournament last weekend, and there's many times where, and I was one of the people that were called on to help with rules, and there was many times when people would think, oh, okay, where is this? And I'm like, oh, now i got to try to find this, and yeah. I'm thumbing through this rule book, and it's a pain in the butt to try to search through it. Yeah. No. Anyway. As a formatting this choice, uh, yeah, just put them all under one heading. And I would love to see that. In format. alphabetical order. I mean, I think it's great that they're trying to standardize and put standard. We don't, we don't have a problem with that, you know, right? You know, more things are basically special rules defined and how they work. You know, great. Just organize <laughs> them differently. Frenzy. Yes, you can talk about frenzy. Well, we're <laughs> this bothers you because I'm convinced I'm right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, no. If if it is the way you say, then then frenzy, I think, is a problem. You think so? Yeah, I think it's too easy to 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 bait guys. If yeah. uh, my my thing with frenzy, I I I don't mind that they took away. I like that they took away the auto uh, pursue. Correct. That you have a chance to 
to, you know, to hold back. I like that they simplified it in the 2.02, so it's no longer, you know, all these different factors of when you apply the minus 2 and when you don't. What I'm, I don't mind the baiting as long as the baiting is your straight up leadership. Right. If the baiting is minus two leadership, and that's what we... That's what it was in the hot fix. Which was... I'm mean, not sorry. That was it was in the beta. Two point, uh, and 2.01, yeah. Right. Um, then I don't like that because it basically means for most people, even in the bubble, that's a seven. Correct. So it's just too hard to pull these these units out of... Too hard. Too, too easy. easy. You know, almost a 50% chance to pull them out of line just because you took a dog Correct. or or whatever to shoot them up or do whatever. And I just think that's too much. Okay. Yes. You know, um, I agree with you there. Especially, you don't want if you have any points behind this unit, you could lose the game just by losing that die roll. You know, I rolled an eight, now I got to go running out. Right. And I and I happen to you know roll a ten or whatever with my <laughs> distance, and I'm in the middle of the freaking field. Right. And, you know, and he fled. <laughs> I couldn't redirect anything else. So then he strikes me because he gets an initiative bonus, or you know, oh, back to or, that one. or I've moved it's into agility. Short, by the way, not agility. Initiative. Thank you. Um, or I've moved into now short range of you know right. missile fire, whatever the case is, and he just blows the unit out of the off the table. So right. yeah, there's things you can do to you know mitigate that. You can put other units partially in front, but then you know that causes other challenges. So right. I I just uh, and the debate that we have now in the hot six is now in this first paragraph you now take a frenzy test at the start of the charge phase each of your units with at least one model with frenzy that could declare a charge against an enemy unit within the unit's advance rate plus seven must make a discipline test called a frenzy test if this test has failed the whole unit must declare a charge this player turn if possible when a unit with at least one model with frenzy makes a frenzy test or a discipline or discipline test to restrain from pursuing the test is subject to maximized roll which means you roll three dice and drop the right. lowest now the question is the way this is worded when a unit with at least one model with frenzy takes a frenzy test if what the way i read this i would read it this way a unit with at least one model makes a frenzy test, the test is subject to the maximized roll. But they have this or discipline test to restrain from pursuing. from pursuing. This test is used with a maximized roll. So which part of the sentence does this last and I, fragment I, I read it, it's to? frenzy tests and, and pursuing roles. No, that's the, uh, no, you do not. You were saying that this part, this maximized role, only applies to the discipline test. I was saying it applied to the frenzy okay, test sorry. to stop from charging and a discipline test. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I yeah. Thought right, whenever right. you're making, the, the, when you don't want to charge, you're making a maximized role, in my opinion. And you're not quite convinced that's what this means. Right. It's definitely not, it's definitely written to interpret either way. Yeah. So. And the argument is basically assuming that your interpretation is correct. Assuming my interpretation is correct. Right. And that the minus two applies. We don't like frenzy. We don't like <laughs> frenzy. Well, it's not minus two. It's the maximized roll now. The mac well, I'm sorry. It's maximized correct. roll is what I meant to say. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we don't we don't like frenzy. If that's the case. Because it's okay if it's some, some little cheapy little unit that you throw out and you right. lose. If, if it's out on the flank, too bad for you. If you're just making a test... To restrain from pursuing at your maximized role, okay. At least you have a chance now where you had no chance right. before. Right. So that's not as bad and I have less of a problem with right. frenzy. And if you're making a you know, a check, but it's against your base leadership, you're within the bubble, you can control your guys. I mean, they still might do it, it's, but it's a smaller, small chance. Right. You probably got a battle uh, BSB. You got your general there. It's just the maximized you know, role. It's just the maximized, the maximized role in that case. And... That becomes yeah, a higher just a higher probability you run out there. I, and I and that, the other thing that if you I, get like a three or four hundred point unit and all of a sudden it just you just roll you know so that can cost you the game. Right. The other thing that was always the other thing that's confused not the other thing that's not clear on this for me frenzy rule is it says at the start of the charge phase each of your units with at least one model with frenzy that could declare an arm you know blah 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 with at least one model. 
So now I have a character with frenzy in this unit. And it says, because I have a character with frenzy in my unit within this range, I must take a discipline test called a frenzy test to see if I charge, right? Yes. But then down here it says characters are never forced to charge out of their units due to failed frenzy test. Right. So now I've got one character in a unit of whatever, call them my orcs. And he's friend. I got a feral orc in with my regular orcs. The, the feral, because there's one, I have to test. So I'm not forced to charge out of my unit. So right. am I forced to charge with the whole unit? Or do I just ignore it? And if I just ignore it, why did I take the test in the first place? Yeah. Like I said, this does also doesn't make sense with this. Right. Why am I taking a test if I can ignore it? Right. So the clarity of the rule we have issues with and in in the worst case interpretations, we think the worst case interpretation, we think it's too much of a penalty. Correct. If if we take the worst interpretation, it's too much with, of a within the bubble. Right. You know, when you're out on the flanks or whatever, fine it's fine. I'm okay with it when you're Outside the bubble, you and you've got roll, some guy. maximized rollout on the bubble. That's fine. It just okay. shows that your general can't control your guys outside okay. of his command Good distance. Point. That, that's okay. It stops some of the some of the I'll call them stronger units to uh, you know do the flanking things right. by themselves. You know, right? Especially where they have a higher risk of being on on flanks and, and such and doing more damage. So. so anyway, I don't understand this rule the way it's written. Yeah. Um, this one, I think, I, I think I'm seeing what they do, but mm -hmm. I can see your argument as well mm -hmm. on the first part, and I have no idea why this is here. Right. And this with this piece. Yeah, we have to make sure we assume that you have to charge with the unit. So. Correct. Which I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, moving on from frenzy. One of your favorites. We'll go to armor definition. Armor definition. So they changed it from 2.001 to 2.002. And it is it is somewhat of an improvement. It is. At but least it's now they're consistent throughout the books. Yes. And but that was my complaint. It is still confusing as hell. It's it's unnecessarily complex to to try to communicate just to be different from what they had in the earlier book. Um, they did such a good yeah, such a good job with shooting. With the aim. And now you have your aim score. Correct. You know, so I yeah. To me, do the exact same mechanic for the armor safe. Right. You have an armor score. You have, you an, have armor an armor score. score, and it's modified plus one or right. minus Correct. one based on your, your purchase, your upgrades. Yep. Just make it clean. Especially when you read, because you have to, I actually read through all of the different army books, like, why is this a zero? Is that, oh. Now the zero that's. The yes. zero that, but this guy's got a two, and, and okay, so, oh, I add this on there. But now they've incorporated everything <laughs> but armor into the armor score of the unit. Right. So there's no longer uh, barding. and oh, was barding still there? There's no longer innate defense, innate I guess, defense. and some other things that are gone. So that's there, but I still have to add the armor, and then I have a factor, and then I have to deduct it from six. And, you know, it's just it's un cumbersome. necessarily cumbersome. Yeah, you figure it out after a while. There's no question. Right. But for, for newer people, and even... Especially when it gets to three four, you'll see people go, "Oh, I have a three up armor save." Uh, no, you have no, a four you up. You have a four, correct? <laughs> yeah, when it's five two, it clicks. But when it's three four, right? So just give them whatever the, their armor rating as their armor save and modify it. I will, in I will give them a plus on the fact that this one's better than the previous one. They at least cleaned it up in the in the. In the beta release, the 2.01 or yeah. whatever it is, 0 2, what, what? Anyway, in that release, they still left a lot of the older plus right. ones and my, you know, and yeah, yeah, all the different was, categories. And it was confusing because things right. were written different in different places. They do at least, and sometimes they'd say the armor was set, and other parts you had an armor save of this. At least they cleaned that piece of it up. And that's been cleaned I appreciated up. That. And I said, and I think the new one's better than the last one, but it's still it's still kind of a mess. It doesn't need to be that convoluted yep it's it's a number that's modified up or down based on if you have more well it's modified usually in one he's one direction if you Correct. you know if you add armor to your guys so you know just fix it on the army lists and and, and don't worry about all <laughs> this uh you know explanation and all that it's not necessary focus the explanation on ap <laughs> all right um next we have dangerous terrain um, dangerous terrain. 
they took away the big thing in this. They took away the dangerous terrain tests in fields, fences, fields Walls. and fences, and water and water. Wall fences slash walls well, yeah. and water for for Cav. Yes. Um, as Cav, I hate you know. <laughs> I, I'm kind of torn on this one. Anything that helps Cav at this <laughs> yeah. point, I hate to see as a bad thing. Yes. But those pieces of terrain should be counters to. to There's certain pieces of terrain that should be counters to Cav, but. Cav technically doesn't need counters right now because the game itself yes. is a counter to Cav. Yes, exactly. If Cav were better, <laughs> I would not like these changes at all. We we'd like to see Cav better in its com as a as in, a, in a combat role, particularly for you know certain armies. Correct. Um, but we both agree that one of its counters should be terrain. Right. That that should you know be a negative to cavalry. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd like them to bring that, bring those dangerous terrain. They're going to keep dangerous terrain as a concept, you know. Just bring it back. Yeah, um, it's what it is. You know, there's other things we can do with Cav, and we'll, we'll have another video on that, on our our ideas at least. Brings us to buildings. Okay. In I don't remember one point two, one point one. <laughs> um, they went to an idea that the building was just this fixed piece of, of blocking terrain right. that guys couldn't go inside of. Um, we really, well, I really liked I think you liked that too. I liked it. Like, well, but then they made the exception. Except for the passing through. Except you could pass through. Yeah, this. I was going to say. It's a blocking piece of terrain, except for some models that could pass through yeah. it and gain a bonus it, from it. It was the bonus. It wasn't the passing through. It wasn't the passing through. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm not a fan because I just, I just see how people deploy in buildings i think it's especially if you're focused on tournament play it would seem that anything that drags out a turn is something you don't want to have right. it doesn't necessarily add a lot a lot of flavor so i like the buildings just being buildings or ruins and if ruins i mean your footprint can still go in there treat it that way right. but if the building building it's locked people can't go inside and the only problem with the old one was like i said you pass through it and you got a save bonus which was kind of goofy yes. because you didn't get that from any other terrain if you got it for all terrain across the board, if you move through terrain, you got the bonus. That would be a different story, but it doesn't work that way. So, correct. Yeah, I, I think this was a not a not the a positive still change. Tough. I mean, I, an example I saw. I mean, and now what is it like a pay, almost a was half three quarters of a page on buildings now? That's it's almost a full page. Yeah. actually, it is a full page. It's on full buildings. page, you know. Um, shooting from a building, up to ten models can shoot from a building. Okay, I'm fine with you know that doesn't sound too bad. Except I saw you know, saw an ogre player park his, his mercenary vets in a building. Yes, yes. And uh, <laughs> that makes a little bit of a difference yeah, a when they different. can't be shot back. That's different than from scrapling shooting from who can't go Some, in the building. Can't, you know? Somehow it is different. Yeah. Because the scraplings, there's too many of them. They can't fit. Yeah, and then the footprint of the building is different than the footprint of the models. Correct. At least they restricted the footprint of the, the unit that can go into a building, which was a change in the correct direction. But I think the correct direction is... Units don't go in buildings. Yes. That's that, not part it, of the game. No, nah, it's it's not a skirmish game. I mean, maybe if you wanted to... I mean, I don't want to make the exception, but I'm thinking, you know, skirmish units. But yeah, even I'm, that's... Odd. And I don't want to see cannons in buildings. Well, there, you can't do cannons you know, in buildings. You, can, um, machines I'm sorry. Um, this, uh, not cannons. Um, the, um, the vermin swarm guys, they can go in, right? The oh, the teams. weapon teams. <laughs> Yes, I would think the weapons teams. I would think you know what. Now I'm thinking about the the big uh, the lizard guys, blunderbuss guy, whatever you know, the thunder guys are from yeah. the the guys with the hand cannons and right. the ogres. Now that you mentioned yeah. cannons, so I mean you know, yeah. Anyway, buildings. It's an impassable terrain piece. Was the best way to go, right? And you could pass through it. Any unit, I should think, should be able to pass through a building if they can get past it, right? Because it represents the unit just kind of weaving out to the side yeah. and going around it. Not actually, you know, going exactly through, jumping in the window on one side right. and piling out the door on the other, and maybe make it they can't march unless they're in sk skirmishers can march past it and other guys can't. Correct. And boom, you're right. done. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, buildings need to go. Yeah, it's not the buildings themselves because we like them on the table. Just yes, like how the rules work. Impassable for them. terrain. Yeah, it's making impassable terrain. Then that brings us to the last item um, was the banner spam. What we're really talking about here is. 
they've made it so a lot of banners you can take multiple instances of. Correct. Which I'm actually not. The, I'm not opposed to because I think it can give you a flavor of your army, but it depends on what that banner does. <laughs> I mean, I actually don't mind if I can have multiple instances right. of flaming on guys. If that's the flame, theme of my army, that's okay. You know, multiple instances of devastating charge, uh, I'm not so good on that, you know. What are you talking about, like a war banner of Rhymer or something? Yeah. <laughs> so, ones that have a, a, a more substantial impact on the right. fighting ability of a unit. I don't care multiple instances of uh, magic resistance. That doesn't bother me. Right. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I agree. I agree with you. I think the... Um... Just some of them. I think they just need to be more selective in what they yes. allowed multiples. So. Right, right. On, on the and it's not a major complaint. Here. It's not. Just it's just and it's a few of it's a couple of the uh, of the general ones and a few of the army specific ones. Correct. Uh, of the problems on here, it's probably the least. Yeah. <laughs> problematic, but. Right. But anyway, so that's the list. Oh wait, no list of things I dislike could be complete without. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> the great green idol. <laughs> Never mind. It makes a Sorry, surprise wrong. appearance. This, this is the wrong video. If you're gonna, if you're gonna surprise him, you need, comes. You need Ooh, to take a picture of Rocky next time the, and have him on. The great green <laughs> idol. <Yeah. laughs> Witness its awesomeness. <laughs> anyway, thank you. <laughs> the name, the name, the name is better than by far than the item. <laughs> so, so these are the things that we said that that with the latest uh, updates that were fixed that we just we're not fans of, and we hope that they. Right. They reconsider. And we're never going to be fans I, of everything. Well, sorry. I don't think we'll ever be fans of everything. No one ever is. <laughs> no one will ever. No one. I mean, and you're probably not going to be. Everyone thinks differently of different things. Correct. So. But, we all have things. I mean, any set of rules is a balance. There's always things you don't like and there's things right. you like. And you need to like a lot more things than you dislike to like the rules, you know. And none of these things are stopping me from playing as they shouldn't anyone. Right. You but just, you've just decided no, you're, you're, no harm in me pointing out what I would like to see improved in the game. But you're no longer playing Demon Legions as an opponent. I'm no longer playing against Demon Legions yeah. as an opponent. <laughs> no, because they're not flammable in the fields anymore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. Because of the hit chart. <laughs> oh, the hit chart. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm avoiding the Scourge I'm sorry, of Wrath. It's only, one, it's only two models. That it, it's, <laughs> it's the Scourge of Wrath. Or, or the, the uh, thing is ridiculous. Or the, mag uh, the other guys, the uh, Lord of Change guy or... With his 27,000 attacks. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Last tournament, that guy turned... I, I talked to somebody. Somebody brought the Lord of Change, or whatever he's called now. Yeah. They brought this guy with the weapon that gives him... The ability that gives him an extra attack for every... I'm oh, sorry. Every time he, ca he casts or dispels a spell, he gains... He has a four-up chance of gaining an attack. Right. So so I talked to one player. I was like, oh, da, da, da. oh you played that guy. Yeah, how'd you do? Guy had 16 attacks versus me. Talk to another guy. He's like, guy had 17. And he's like, I win. Somebody's from sitting across the table from, you know, like two tables over. He heard the conversation. says, I win. He had 20 versus <laughs> yeah. me. 20. It's a lot of attacks at high strength, high yes. weapons. And they somewhat I... fixed that. As well. they, they made an adjustment to that as well. Yes. Yeah, it's, anyway. it's still a bit off. But, uh, but the guy, once again, he's hard to hit and he hits really easily. So, you know. Correct. But, anyway. uh, yes. So those are our things that... Uh, that, that we think that uh, could use some tightening up could use some tightening up based on the last two two versions so we'll see what happens in April yep because uh, you know they take all of our advice they should <laughs> as they should yeah. all right well if that's true then <laughs> anyway <laughs> all right thank you for listening till next time